good morning. Um, so I want to preface this by saying I don't necessarily know how to make and um, edit YouTube videos. I'm trying to learn. Um, I'm doing this as an act of obedience because it's time for my testimony to be shared. Um, and hopefully I can record it all correctly on um, like the first go. Um, Cause again, I don't really know how to edit. Um, so I'm just gonna talk to y'all like I would talk to a person. I don't necessarily know where to look. Um, just doing my best this morning. Um, so I was born and raised as a Hindu. Um, I also fell in love with studying the occult um, when I was eight years old. So I wanna talk about how I got radically saved, um, the first miracle that God did for me and how we um, set the tempo for our relationship. So it goes back to um, 2012. Now at this time, I was um, waitlisted at two medical schools. I had been wanting to become a doctor since I was a little girl. I knew since I was about four years old and I had a lot of exposure to hospitals um, just growing up. And I did grow up in India. Um, I was born in the third world um, and I truly had a heart for helping others. And I was doing all the altruistic things. I was getting my service hours. I had taken the MCAT and I did really well. I was like the president of every club in my college. I was student body senator. Um, I was doing research, um, all the volunteer work. I had done all of the right things, um, had a good GPA. Um, and yet I was in this place where I seemed to lack divine help. And I always had this knowing that, you know, God was there. Like, even if I worshiped like a different God, like a Hindu God or whatever, or if I was just generally praying out loud to just God, like the God that is sovereign and runs the whole universe, um, <clears throat> I, I never seemed to have divine help. And I was under the impression that if I was a great person and I would do all of the correct things um, and, and did the most, you know, like in terms of getting into medical school, that's the time when God steps in and does the divine miracle for me. And it never happened. Like no matter what temple I visited, no matter what puja or ritual that I would do, my prayers wouldn't be answered. And I had this... Um, I don't know if it was like a vision or or like a knowing or I don't really know what what this was but I would see like my prayers get all the way up to God's ears and just when it would be earshot the prayer would disappear and I was having this like knowing or revelation or I don't, I don't know how to describe it at this point and I was always very spiritually aware and intuitive as a child um I've had my gifts since since birth but that's not to say Satan didn't get in there at times and pervert the gifts that God had already given me so um I, at that time in 2012 I was in a post back program I was actually taking classes with the med students I was in block one and block three with them and if I performed well enough that when I got into their medical school like I actually wouldn't have to repeat those blocks so I had a lot of friends that were first year medical students and at this point you know just being waitlisted at two schools and I had fought for this my whole life um, the average matriculation rate of um, med students is 0.2%, anywhere between 0.2 to 0.3, which means out of all the people that apply, only 0.2 or 3% um, actually go on to start medical school. So very slim chance, right? It's like very difficult to get in, and I'm sure it's even more competitive now. I know they changed the MCAT and everything. So um, I was starting to develop like anxiety and just spiritually I was tormented. I actually started to have panic attacks, not knowing where my life was going. Um, I would just crumble to the floor and it would feel like I was having like a heart attack or something. 
And I made friends with this girl, her name was Mary, and she was just so loving. There was something about her that was just so pure and kind. You know, we would get um, coffee at Panera or, or coffee at Starbucks, um, and we would just chat. And she always just loved on me and ministered to me. Um, I had no idea she was a Christian. Actually, at that time, I despised Christians because I hated their holier than thou attitude. Um, I even had an ex-boyfriend um, that was very abusive to me, like emotionally extremely abusive. Um, and so my heart was hardened towards Christians. Um, and then I even had another boyfriend um, in college and his family was Pentecostal Christian. While he was a wonderful man, I had some really ugly experiences with his family and they treated me differently, you know, because I wore pants or maybe because I wore makeup and, you know, had different skin color than them. I don't really know. Um, but I just didn't have a good experience with Christians. And I was like, Mary, I don't understand how you are always just like so peaceful and like you just know everything's going to be okay. I mean, medical school, it's so hard, girl. How are you? Like, how? And she said to me, you know what, Ramia? My secret is Jesus. And I'm like, what? And um, <laughs> I was confused. And she said, no matter what, God promises me that he has me. And she told me the story of her experience about an exam that um, I think I got a I think I got a C on it. Um, she got like a mid range B, um, and like she was um, not studied up, and she was very stressed out, and she was having a lot of panic and anxiety about the grade that she got, and God told her, "You got an eighty six, Mary." And, and when she went to go check her exam score, it was exactly 86. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Anyway, she's like, Rami, I'm not going to sit here and just like preach to you. I'm just going to give you a little booklet. It's like maybe 20 pages, like read it on your own time and just learn about it. And I was like, you know what? None of these other gods have done anything for me. Like, I just want to know that I'm not alone. And um, she gave me this booklet. I think I still have it to this day, it's somewhere. And it's like 20 pages and it says, Knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. It's this little blue booklet. And um, <clears throat> I read it and I was like, okay, this is fine. Like, you know, I really don't have anything to lose. I had no conviction of sin. I was not concerned about heaven or hell because at that time I believed in reincarnation. I didn't believe in Satan. I knew demons were real because that was taught in um, Hindu theology. And I knew that there were also multiple little gods running around and that there was like a supreme God above all. Like that was all I knew. And I remember like just sitting on this book, um, I had worked out and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go take a shower and I'm gonna go read this prayer. Because I, like I said, the worst thing that could happen is absolutely nothing. I had so badly desired like an encounter with um, the divine. I just didn't know how to express it at that time. Um, and <laughs> so I might get emotional while sharing this, but like I, wanted to take a shower because in my Hindu programming, you have to be physically clean before God. Um, and like you should definitely like wash up and make yourself presentable. I had that idea, but something in me just pulled me to the sinner's prayer and I just prayed it. And even as I was reading it, I was just welling up with emotion I couldn't explain it and within a moment this presence just took over the whole room it like sucked up all the air um in the room and I just immediately knew like this is the real God like I am standing before him and I was sobbing and I just knew like that he was holding me in the palm of his hand and the presence actually stayed a really long time and he didn't leave um he helped me he was just there 
to a point where I'm like overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't, I don't really know what's happening here. And, and so I actually stepped into the shower, like in the presence of God, just cause I was crying anyway. And, and it was almost like, I don't know, like a foreshadowing of my baptism to come. And that was how I had an encounter with Christ. And then, um, this was on May, May 10th, um, 2012. And I texted Mary <laughs> cause I didn't know if this was a big deal or not. Um, and then also just all the thoughts racing in my mind were like, is my family going to disown me? Like I just left. Uh, an entire religion that I was raised in. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to act. And so I texted Mary and she called me. She's like, you gave your life to Jesus. And I was like, yeah. And, um, and she's like, Robbie, this is a big deal. And, 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 and I'm like, I, I, oh, I don't know. Like, cause at that time I was still under the impression, like Jesus was like, just another God, but he's the one with like real power. But I, I still struggle to like differentiate of how good my God was. <laughs> and, um, anyway, she brought me my first Bible. I still have it to this day. It's a new King James. And she bought me a devotional and a journal. Um, and she invited me to her family's, um, home church, which I felt a little weird because people were really emotional and, Again, I didn't really understand it because I had never been exposed to it. And there were other things um, <clears throat> leading up to my life um, where I did actually have these like God moments with Jesus that I just didn't really put the pieces together that he had marked me um, for his kingdom my whole life. Um, that's coming later. But anyway, I, I had... Um, you know, like I, I was still kind of struggling um, with school um, and I was still concerned about the whole med school thing. I wanted my life to be settled. And um, Mary prayed for me one time before another medical school interview that came up for me. Um, and I actually literally accepted Christ just a few days short of another medical school interview that was um, coming up. Anyway, um, July 5th rolled around. I'm now waitlisted at two places and rejected from one. And I actually got rejected from one school because I was told that I was overqualified. Wouldn't you want somebody that is like, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter now. Um, anyway, July 4th rolled around and um, kind of got into a fight with the guy that I was um, with at the time. And then we broke up uh, July 5th. And then um, there was this freak like rainstorm that came into the city that I was living in. I was living three and a half hours from my parents and um, the power went out. And I had a roommate who was never home and um, I had like 40% battery on my phone and all of the power was out in the city. And so I just decided to drive to my parents um, for the weekend. And again, I was still like ruminating on this, like, God, like, what about med school? Like, what about med school? Like, I have done everything right. Like, I need to get in. I need my life to be settled. I need to have clear direction about where my future is headed. Um, and what came to mind, um, and at this point, I was two months in into reading the Bible consistently. Like, I caught fire for it and I just couldn't even put it down. The new King James was hard for me to digest. So I was actually in my iPhone Bible app like every single day. And I was doing plans on like worry, anxiety and, and all these um, things. And at that point, I mean, for some reason I had the Lord's prayer memorized my whole life. I, I don't know why that is, but I just did. But um, as I was driving, I, as I'm talking to God, um, the part in the Lord's Prayer that stood out to me is the part where he talks about forgiving others for their sins against you. 
and there was only one person that I had held a grudge against um, for five years. Um, he put me in a very bad position. Um, he was emotionally very abusive. It was my first boyfriend. Um, and, and then he, I was like, okay, God, like, I don't know how to contact him. Like he's literally blocked on every platform. I don't have his number. And then as clear as day, 330, and I'm not gonna finish the number on here um, because I actually it was actually his entire phone number. So I called it and it was him. And he was like, I thought I'd never hear from you again. And now this is a man who actually was on like a Christian scholarship too, on top of everything else. He was a very terrible example of who a Christian really is. And I forgave him. And then I get home to my parents and um, I'm sitting on my twin size bed in the house that I grew up in. And I'm like, okay, God, I did the thing that you asked me to do. What about med school? And I heard a voice like thunder and it came from the sky. And he said to me, July 16th, do not doubt. And I was like, did I just hear the voice of God? Like the God of the universe? He just talked to me. And I like ran into my mom's bedroom and I was like, mom, I don't want you to have anxiety or worry about my life because I'm going to get into medical school and my life is going to be settled and everything's gonna be okay. And she just stared at me blankly. Um, and I headed back to my room and I just kind of relaxed the remaining weekend and headed up um, back to the city that I was living in. So July 16th uh, rolls around and I'm now cowering under my sheet <laughs> because I don't know if this thing's gonna happen or not. <laughs> um, and anyway, I heard this gentle, precious, um, mild uh, voice and I now know it was the voice of the Holy Spirit say to me, um, get out your laptop, pull up your Gmail and wait. And this was spoken to me, um, I believe around like 8.15 a.m. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. 8.33 a.m. I get an email from a certain medical school that I was waitlisted at saying we had one student drop out of the course. Are you still interested in coming here? Now I'm Indian, like everybody in my community like pretty much goes to med school. I, you either get a phone call or you get a piece of um, mail um, letting you know of your acceptance. I have never heard of anybody being asked, are you still interested in coming here? And I was like, yes, yes, yes I am. And um, the lady was like, okay, great. I'm actually putting together your paperwork now, but you have 10 days to move here, find a place to live. You start class July 26. So within 10 days, my whole life changed. And um, that's, and then there's another story that's also part of my testimony, whether I finished medical school or um, how I was delivered out of certain ungodly things while I was going through med school, when I strayed, I'll cover all those in another time. But I really wanted to share this miracle with you because there's a lot of people walking around not believing in the audible voice of the Father, speaking to you Old Testament style, coming through with prophetic um accuracy and telling you timestamps and dates of when certain things are happening, I'm telling you it happens. It can, if it can happen for a two month old Christian, it can happen to you. Like if he did it for me, he will do it for you. So that's all I wanted to share today. God bless y'all and have a great day. Good evening, um, it's Ramya and tonight I am actually going to share my um, history of being involved with the occult and the new age and just 
all the things that the Bible says that we should not be involved in. So I have a particularly ugly deliverance journey and I want everybody to keep in mind that when you go through a deliverance, it looks different on everybody. So the longer you're steeped in something, the longer it might take to get back out and the uglier the process might be. Not all deliverance is instant. Sometimes it's through process, which is what I went through. Um, so I think it's important to just kind of preface that, you know, I do have another testimony of how I was born into Hinduism and God delivered me out of false religion and how I had an encounter with Jesus. That's a separate testimony, but this one is going to be only regarding um, new age practices or occult practices. And let me tell you, there's nothing new about the new age. It's as old as the garden. Um, it is manipulation, it is deception. So anytime we are manipulating other people's will or God's will, we are in the sin of rebellion. We are in the sin of witchcraft. So that being said, the largest uh, religion in the world is witchcraft. Um, mostly because a lot of people don't even know that they are in that sin by engaging with some of these practices. Um, so when I say new age, I'm talking um, candle magic, um, divination, tarot cards, oracle cards, yoga, meditation, Reiki, past life regression, Akashic records, um, really any of those things. Um, if you're not worshiping the Lord, you're either worshiping yourself or the devil or some idol. It's all idolatry. So just remember, if something keeps directing you to anything other than Jesus, then maybe that's not a practice that you need to be in. Maybe that's not a spiritual practice that you need in your life. So that's pretty much the best way to figure out if something is really worthy for you to do or not. I will say one caveat, um, yoga. The reason I call it a new age practice, it's really not. Yoga is a form of Hindu worship. However, I mention it here in this video because yoga is um, a gateway to occult and new age practices. It often starts there. The word yoga means to yoke. So when you're a Christian and you're doing something called yoga, you have to ask, what is it yoking me to? So even if you're not worshiping demons, which I think you are if you are doing yoga, um, yoga um, still will focus on that breath work, you know, and everything keeps turning it back to self. It's like self, 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 like me, 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 me. Like yoga's always about you. So even yoga, like even if you don't think you're worshiping demons, at the very minimum, you're worshiping yourself. So that is not a godly practice appropriate for Christians. So please don't even take take yoga and try to Christianize it by calling it like praise moves or whatever. It, that's just, don't do it. So that's a caveat. So I've always had a heart for God. I've always had a heart for people and I've always loved nature. Um, so since I was a child, even though I was Hindu, I always knew that surely there's a sovereign God that's in charge of all other gods. Um, so I knew God existed. I knew a supreme deity existed above all things. And the best way I can describe it is like a supreme God. Um, because, you know, in my limited um, mental capacity as a child, that's how I understood it. I also was a hyper like sensitive child. Like I was always just very in tune with the energies around me. Um, I also used to have a lot of recurring dreams and I can still recall all of the dreams that I had at three, four or five years old. Um, really bizarre. I just have very, very heightened um, spiritual <laughs> feelers and they're even more heightened now as a Christian than they ever have been. So I knew something was different about me when I first um, 
moved to the US and I started realizing, okay, every time we do popcorn reading in class, I always know which number is gonna be called next. I always know who the teacher's gonna call on next. And then as I kind of went on with time, I could always know how a movie was gonna end or a cartoon was gonna end. I just would always like know these things. These are kind of like the beginnings of my prophetic gifting, but I'm not deceived. That's not to say Satan didn't get in there, try to pervert these gifts that I already had. The Bible says that you are given your spiritual gifts at your, you know, birth. So, I mean, I had mine, but I have an entire lifetime under my belt of Satan trying to get in there and trying to pervert my gifts for his glory, which is not going to happen in Jesus name. But um so yeah, so that's like third grade, fourth grade, that's kind of happening. We're moving around, we're immigrants, we're trying to figure it out. You know, there were other things um, that I had to overcome, like, you know, being an immigrant. First thing I did was I got rid of my accent. Second thing I did was try to learn the American culture and read a lot of books and try to assimilate and fit in because I went from having everything made for me to coming to a country and having everything yanked out from underneath me like, like a rug, you know? So um, I was just kind of hyper-focused on that. And we moved to Michigan and um, when I was in my fifth grade class, somebody had this Harry Potter book. They recommended it to me and I was like such a bookworm. I went to the library every single weekend and I would just plow through tons of books. And so I eventually was able to um, check out a copy of Harry Potter and I thought, well, that's interesting. I've read enough books to know that if witchcraft is real, um, there's gonna be books about it. If we have a, a fiction book about witchcraft, surely there's a non-fictional basis to that. And so I started going to the library and checking out books on herbal alchemy, on roots, spells, um, Greek mythology, reading about all these little G gods, was always fascinated with them. And I, you know, I still kind of am. Like, it still is very intriguing to me. I still know like a lot of herbalism and, and things like that. My grandpa um, practiced homeopathic medicine. So I was always into these things. So um, one of the books that I checked out was Scott Cunningham's um, A Solitary guide to like a or a guide to a solitary practitioner and it was basically how to practice wicca as a single person um, without a coven and i was fascinated there was so much ritual in this book and i'm like well i can't get access to these things but sure i i want to i want to do this protection thing right now so i started visualizing the rituals um, in there. There were a lot of visualization rituals. Um, so I started doing those things. And um, again, don't really think anything of it. And then my family moved again to my now hometown. So in middle school, again, we moved again. So now I gotta like make friends and start all over. And I made friends with these two girls and they were strange. They were strange, but I was happy to have a friend group, happy to always have somebody to sit with at lunch. And, um, you know, uh, I started going over to one of the girls' um, houses and her parents were just really absentee parents. And um, she had an obsession with the exorcist. There's like a gnat in my face, sorry. Um, Florida girl problems. Um, so we watched The Exorcist, which was crazy and creepy one night. And then we started playing with an Ouija board. I was probably 11 years old at this point, and we were communicating with the spirit. Now these two girls, they had been doing sleepovers together without me. Um, so they were used to communicating this one spirit and its name was Slug. And it's apparently some man that like got killed by being run over by a horse carriage. Obviously this is a demon. Um, you know, there's no, there's no such things as ghosts. There's only familiar spirits. Um, you know, God gives you 
angels to monitor you and take care of you and hold you up in all your ways all the days of your life and then satan being the great counterfeiter that he is he gives you monitoring spirits that's where all the psychics and mediums um readers get their intel from they're just talking to demons there's no such things as spirit guides the only spirit guide you ever need is the holy spirit so anyway um we were talking to this thing and i will say there's this kind of thing that's a theme that's always happened in my life is whenever there's like kind of an attack or something bad is going to happen it usually happens to me um and i don't speak that over myself in jesus name uh i cancel those words but it's just a pattern that i used to have in the past so um they were talking to it and i was so freaked out and they started asking him questions and they asked, are you in the room with us? And he said, yes. And they said, could you touch one of us? And he said, yes. And I felt two taps as real as day, like so human on my left shoulder. And I screamed so loud and something entered in. I don't know what it is, but something entered in and I have no idea. And then we went downstairs and watched the craft. So demonic. Um, like if it wasn't so demonic, it would actually be like kind of a good movie, but it was just so, so demonic. Um, anyway, like I kind of walk away from those two as friends, but some other things started happening in my life. I, you know, grew up in a pretty tumultuous home and I really, like, even though I've always kind of looked like this, I've looked the same my whole life. Um, and like in middle school, I really preferred like rock music, like Marilyn Manson, Rage Against the Machine, like Ozzy. And I started going to all those concerts and there's a spirit there's a spirit of influence that comes in through those things and the reason i'm sharing this is these are there's many doors that i'm opening here as i'm going through life and it's setting me up for something that i'm going to experience a little bit later in life the second i turn to christ so anyway things kind of become dormant when i enter high school because at this point i don't in high school like you know i finally like kind of figured out you know friendships and things like that i was always in a lot of like the smart classes i was in the honors and the ap classes and i started doing really well in school my only concern in high school is really just to get into a really good college, do really well on my SATs, ACTs, like I had goals. I finally had goals that were outside of just making friends and keeping friends. And like, I really found my place. Like I loved my high school experience. Like I had a good high school experience. Um, so at that point, I'm like, that stuff cannot be real. Like there's no way God is real. There's no way these demons are real. There's no such thing as angels. Like everything is based on my hard work and I want to be a good person. I want to be kind and I want to be known for being virtuous and loving. I was very focused on being an honorable person and I wanted merit in my life. So fast forward, I go off to college and I started initially at a liberal arts school. Um, I accumulate myself a, a abusive boyfriend that was my first boyfriend and he was actually christian um he was on this like christian scholarship and he would take me to church every weekend and i would just look at him and be like you're such a terrible person <laughs> like i don't get all this stuff and um and i had you know a traumatizing experience um at, towards the end of my freshman year, I transferred, I kind of left all that behind. And then um, again, not really feeling this whole like spirituality thing, especially at that liberal arts school, I started as a philosophy and theology major. So I was reading a lot of these like Buddhist crap, uh, like 
Krishnamurti and, and like, I don't even know. Um, but I knew they really messed with my head because I felt like um, my life was spiraling out of control. And um, the funny thing is I actually ended up taking several classes on Christianity and ended up reading parts of the gospel. Super interesting. But again, not really concerned with that. I was just very focused back on, you know, being a good person, having merit in all of my academic endeavors. I was very high achieving in college. I was focused on uh, preparing for the MCAT, um, applying to medical school. I volunteered at like everything that I could possibly do. I was like president of like every club, like I was student body senator for my entire college and just like I was just busy. Like again, I wasn't really thinking about God, but I had another boyfriend who was such a godly, godly man. He prayed for me to get saved. And I know that two years after our, our breakup, like it was his prayer for me, like being answered. His whole family was um, praying for me. But again, not too much involvement in the occult. I was just kind of focused on being a good person and works-based everything and it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't really practice Hinduism. I don't really practice anything. Like, I just gotta get into med school. Like, that's what I was focused on. But, as you know, um, I've shared in my journey of like, how I got into medical school. Fast forward a couple years later, um, I heard, you know, I pray the sinner's prayer, you know, all my anxiety starts to st starts to heal. And then um, I heard the voice of God come from the sky and prophetically tell me what day I was going to get into medical school. And I got into medical school on the day the Lord said, and do 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 like fast forward, go ahead and start med school. So that's when things really started to get hard. Um, for some reason, I got it in my head that now that I'm Christian, I have to be a really good person um, for Jesus. And somehow I ended up in that self-help section um, of Barnes & Noble and I started buying Gabrielle Bernstein's books. And it also kind of eventually led to me watching a lot of Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul Sunday, and it's like super worldly, you know. And then I also started doing yoga as a part of like alleviating anxiety. Like instead of giving my anxiety to Jesus, like I thought I had to do yoga. And it's so backwards because I wanted nothing to do with yoga <laughs> as a Hindu. I was really starting to mix and match doctrines, and then I, um, found this book and it's not the secret it's something like the secret but it basically taught the same thing a girl from my med school class had it and when i was at her place i was like can i borrow this she's like yeah sure and i took it home and it was all about like manifesting and i was like oh this is cool and then um med school starts to not really go that well like i'm kind of spiraling. I just don't feel like I have any kind of spiritual stability. I mean, I had just moved states away. I am now a different religion than my family. I'm in a new program, new school. I don't know anybody yet. I can't trust anybody yet. So there's just a lot of unsettlement and spiritually, I start spiraling. Um, you know, definitely was going out every weekend and um, I always had a lot of FOMO. So like anytime somebody would invite me out, shoot, put my clothes on and I'd run out the door. Like I just was so like, I, I was so hyper like social and spreading myself too thin. Like I felt like I had no control over my life. I couldn't say no to anything. And everything was just spiritually so unstable. Um, the other aspect of all this is um, my prophetic giftings got 
really heightened when I was in medical school. I was starting to have a lot of dreams and they would like come to pass within a few days. Like I would dream about something, it would come to pass. Dream about something, it would come to pass. It was so scary. And I was like, I need to do something. Like I don't have a handle on my life. So I started going to this church. Unfortunately, this church didn't really believe in like the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Maybe they believed, but they didn't operate in it. And I felt like I had no help in like I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know why I was like picking up on all these things and they were manifesting. And I tried to have some pastoral counseling, but they made me feel like like I was evil for experiencing that. But I had no control over like what I was gonna dream and what was gonna happen like in front of me. Um, and this also, I'm not even covering the spiritual warfare and the persecution I was already going through in uh, medical school. So anyway, somehow I got it in my head, like, you know what? Maybe life is about cycling through all the different fates. Like maybe I'm supposed to be Buddhist next Maybe I need to focus on earth-based spirituality, or maybe I need to um, be like Muslim next. I don't really know. So maybe that's what life is about, is I get to experience all these different types of spiritualities, and one day I will have all the answers. So that was what I thought. And I left that Baptist church and um, was kind of doing my own thing. And I met a girl in medical school and she was a spiritualist. She literally was raised in that religion. And if you know anything about spiritualism, one of their biggest things is they believe in life after death and that it's evidenced through mediumship. It's like a really perverted gospel because a lot of these spiritual churches have crosses when you walk in and they will have like um, all of the seven chakras like hanging off and then there's like a mediumship service at the end. Um, I didn't know that that was like the extent of her spirituality but one day I was like hey girl do you know where I can buy crystals? I don't know why I was thinking about crystals but I was thinking about crystals and we walked into an herb shop and that's when it really began. Like I got into the crystals, I got into the Reiki, I got into the tarot cards, I got into mediumship, I got into divination, I got into Akashic records. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But the thing is, here in this place, in this shop, and all of the people that I was meeting through this herb shop, um, I was embraced. I was um, loved, or it seemed that way anyway. And my gifts were revered. Um, one of the things that always surprised people is that I was not trained in any of these arts. Um, and I was always very accurate as a reader. So I got readings and I gave readings. And then I linked up with the sisterhood called the Olana Sisters. And they kind of took me under their wing. Keep in mind, I'm like in middle or medical school as I'm going through all of this. Like there was just always so much like going on. And I got into the candle magic. I got into, gosh, like I got into everything. I got, I learned about hoodoo and I got in touch with this company called the Candle Wick Shop and they were selling these like mystical candles that you can just kind of burn down as spells. And, you know, I was always taught that it was like, oh, it's about intentions. Jesus is a ascended master. But if you need something else, like you need growth in this area, you can talk to Hecate or you could talk to like Athena or you can talk to Lakshmi or, or like it was like that and man things were so spiraling out of control um but what I realized over years of doing this 
is everything was always a temporary band-aid for what seemed to be like a permanent problem. Like I was always having to do something else. Like I was always have to, having to do another visualization or another meditation or go to this class and have this healing modality done. I gotta go to this healing temple. I gotta go, go to Lilydale Assembly. Like <sighs> there was just so much going on. I had so many encounters with the demonic. It's crazy. Um, I don't know if I want to share all of them. Maybe the point of this video is to share all of this. Um, I'll talk about Lilydale Assembly. Lilydale Assembly is um, in Lake Casadaga, New York. It is the largest congregation of mediums in the world. They all literally just live there. It's just a demonic place and so I was there with all those like TV mediums getting trainings having going to these services and I would also stay up there um, and it was actually kind of a really beautiful area like of the state of New York but um, I had an experience I was going through some trials and tribulations with school and I was meditating I was manifesting this outcome that I wanted from my school administration. So I was on my balcony meditating with my crystals and um, I was visualizing and I heard a voice saying, go check your email. Went, checked, checked my email. It was the very outcome that I wanted. Great, good job, Ramia, you master manifester. That's what my Pagan friends called me. They called me the master manifester. I was like known for it because I was so good at it. Um, and then I heard a voice saying, it's now time for you to head to Lilydale. I want you to pack some food. I want you to pack a bag and I want you to get in your car. The voice was so beautiful. Like it was so peaceful. And I was like, okay, I will. And I head up that way not realizing where this place even is i have no idea where it's at i didn't know it was like in the middle of nowhere there aren't really any food places around and i'm driving through middle of nowhere upstate new york and then i have no gps like my gps just like went away and i'm lost in the woods somewhere like driving through some like wooded area and I heard this voice, so peaceful, so gentle, even loving. And it gave me directions. And I could feel like this energy, like this, like siphoning, um, pulling me that way. And I followed it and boom, I was at Lilydale Assembly. And when I, got there i had this encounter with like a ghost it was just a demon um and i got introduced to all these like there were like famous people there like when i was at lilydale um it's like a place where like deepak chopra oprah winfrey they all go there and i had a really good it seemed good um experience but i now realize at that time this voice is so eerily similar to the Holy Spirit, but the difference is there's no holiness in this voice that I was hearing. That is the only difference. The way the devil can mimic the voice of God is astounding. And I know that at that time I was being nurtured by Satan himself because at that time, I believed it was my purpose to be a wonderful witch and a great medium and a medical doctor. Like I truly believed it was my purpose and I was ready to serve. Um, there were so many times where I would hear this voice and it, now I know I could have, I could hear both of the voices now and I'd know which one's holy and which one's not. But that voice has stepped in during those demonic seasons and told me to take a different turn during like 
driving and then I later find out, oh, there was an accident. So, and I called it spirit. That's what we called it back in the spiritualist community. We called it spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but spirit. So that was like, I thought I was so on the path. I was really steeped in these extra false gospels, like extra biblical type texts. A Course in Miracles is one. And then I read another book about the Christ consciousness. And I was still going to regular church here and there too. I was really mixing and matching a lot of doctrine, especially because it played really nicely with the religion I was raised in, which was Hinduism. So it became this like justification too, on top of everything else. And I became, this is the only addiction that I've struggled with my life in my life is I became so addicted to divination. Um, I could actually read playing cards as if they were tarot cards. Um, I could read with any earth-based medium and I was obsessed with worshiping creation. I, I would go into the woods. I, would, I lived in Erie, Pennsylvania, so I would go into the peninsula and um, I like just, I was always like this barefoot wonder child and like hippie lady. I was like morphing into that. Um, eventually one of the girls, um, in the Alana sister, she passed away, um, at a very young age. It was kind of shocking. Um, and then I went through a really terrible thing, um, at the beginning of my third year of medical school. It was life-changing trauma. And then I had to move to a rural area. Even after that, I couldn't let this stuff go. I was like, well, that happened, but I just need to heal my root chakra. Um, and I had another girlfriend in medical school that was also into this. And she actually, even though she's technically a physician, she is just basically a new age teacher now. Um, it was really dark times. And I, I moved to this rural area and now I'm in middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania and I didn't know anybody. All I was doing was going to the hospital and then coming home. I needed a community. Um, so that's how I discovered Periscope, this live streaming app at the time. And there were so many readers. So then I started having an online community to feed my addiction of reading cards and like always trying to figure out the future. And now I'm grasping at straws to understand what my future held. Think of the irony of this. God gave me a prophetic gift at birth. If something was coming, the Lord lovingly and freely gave it to me either as a warning or as knowledge for whatever purpose. Now that gift that I had is completely taken from me. God removed it. And now I'm grasping at straws through divination to get back into touch with the gift that God already gave to me. I'm now using cards to give me wisdom when God gifted me the gift of wisdom at birth. I was always known for being very wise. And now I need car like a deck of cards. I had it all. Like I had like Oracle decks. Like I had so many, like it was actually becoming such a problem. There were several nights where I had exams the next day, but I couldn't study because I wanted to ask about this pressing question that I had. And one day I actually had to take all like all of my decks and I realized I was like, oh my gosh, I only have one weekend to study for this. And I'm so stuck on these cards. I had to take all those cards and I just had to run out to the dumpster and throw them in there. 
And then after I took the exam, I went and repurchased those same decks. Insane, insane. Um, so, I mean, I don't know that I was ever like possessed or anything like that. Shoot, I think a wise person said to me that he sees possession as like a spectrum and I was somewhere on that spectrum. I just don't know what. Um, I was also, I was also channeling, um, I was asking these spirits to come and like sit in me, um, and give me wisdom and I was doing automatic writing. Um, I was very into the, these like Pleiadian beings and things like that. I wanted to communicate with them. Um, I have some thoughts on that. I have some biblical thoughts on that, but, um, the other thing, the other experience that was so bizarre, and I forgot that I even had this experience, I paid like 150 bucks for it, was to go sit in this dark room with this crystal skull named Max, and no one knows where this crystal skull was like made. There's like five different pieces of quartz, and it's like a crystal skull. You can like Google it. His name's Max. And I went into this room, and I did it with that new age, um, girlfriend that I made in med school and we put like our foreheads to this skull and something like went in me and it spoke to me for a few days. It was so scary. It was the creepiest. It was literally the creepiest thing I'd ever experienced. But then I saw something else like leave out of me. Um, I was bringing in so much energy that things in my apartment were exploding. Like if I lit a candle, the candle would like explode and shatter the glass um, candle holder. Um, Cause I just have a tendency to either, I can fill a room or I can clear a room. Like I just have so much energy. I'm a very polarizing person um, in real life. And that never changed um, while I was going through the occult. Um, every time I would take a picture, there'd be these like orbs, you know, Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Some people used to think it was like angel lights or whatever. No, there were probably just presence of demons around me. Um, but the kicker for me is this is when I realized that there's no way that anything that I was doing was good or divine. When I would read for people as a medium, the more substances I had in my body, the more accurate the reading. Why is that? If this was a gift from God, why is it when I am the most impure that I have the best direct line for my intel? That's when it really started to click. If this was like towards the end of 2016. And um, I then, I don't know what I was doing in school. I, I can't even tell you at this point because school was just like a mess. I somehow managed to get rotations in Florida. So I moved from like upstate New York all the way down to um, the state of Florida. And I actually ended up on the same street that I grew up on in St. Petersburg when I was little. So when I was in Florida, go figure, I am right by a bunch of spiritualist churches and a new age bookshop. And guess what they had? They had demo decks of all kinds of different cards. Again, I continued to spiral. Like I was spiraling out of control. Like my mind was completely consumed and completely obsessed with how the future was gonna look for me. Um, I couldn't, at that point, like the spell stuff, like where I was trying to man manifest good juju or like whatever in my life, that wasn't even in my head. Like it was all about divination. I lost control. Like I would wanna go do something, like I'd wanna go to the beach, but instead sometimes I would just get in my car and I'd go to that bookshop and I would just be in there the whole day. Um, and then fast forward, I started to realize like, okay, 
I have given now three years of my life to these practices. And any good that I manifest and bring into my life, it's aborted very quickly. And then I have to go do something else, like another visualization or a meditation or whatever. I'm like, why is everything just so temporary? Because I'm not only building this stuff with like demons, but I'm also doing it on my flesh. Okay. And, um, man, I sowed a lot of destruction into my own life. I'm not going to talk about some of the terrible things that I've been through, but towards the end of 2016 and the beginning of like 2017, I just knew like what I was doing was wrong. I did not feel the love in in the new age and working with these ascended masters. They were always just asking more and more and more and more and more. More of my time, more of my energy and um and I have pictures from this era like I just look dead in my eyes like there's like no soul there and I also had high grade trauma and I was struggling with PTSD and um I I don't even have words to describe the level of everything coming at me and the level of like my life starting to crash down on my head and I realized I'm like you know what Jesus was the only guy that ever loved me and he never asked for anything of me like I think he's the real deal screw all this stuff so I made that decision and then one month later I had a complete book of Job experience I lost everything I lost my medical school career I had dreamt of being a doctor since I was a little girl and I basically lost that wonderful testimony I, I uploaded um, of how God got me into medical school and how it was this huge miracle and how I realized I was prophetic and how I had an encounter with Jesus and all those beautiful things that was the thing that I I got to lose because I sowed to my flesh and I sowed into witchcraft and the Bible says you will reap what you sow. There's repentance at that time. I still don't really like understand what repentance was. I had never gone to a church that really taught it. Like I had never heard of this repentance thing until after I turned back to Christ for real this time. So anyway, I had to drop out of medical school. I'm not going to talk about all the nitty gritty details or the other trauma that I went through, but I had to leave um, and my career ended. Um, and that was the cost of dabbling in witchcraft heavily for three years. But I mean, there was the whole me opening doors of witchcraft systematically throughout my life, of course, but I really didn't actively partake in it except for those three years. And I mean, I have to live with this. I have to live with these consequences. It's not easy. Um, another part of this journey is I was, I was an admirer of Doreen Virtue, Dr. Doreen Virtue. And she was also known as like the angel lady in um, the new age. And she had these safe tarot cards and everything the thing that's so interesting is when I decided to turn back on the straight and narrow path, the whole New Age community at the time was making fun of Doreen Virtue for saying Christianity is the way. But then I realized, oh, she was right. And um, and then I shortly after I asked God, I'm like, God, can you confirm to me that this is the way? Like, and she posted something like that night and it confirmed like, yeah, daughter, I want you to get rid of all your crystals, all your cards, all your pendulums, all your herbs, all your demonic books, everything I want you to get rid of it. And I took, and I didn't even hesitate for two seconds. 
after I heard the Lord and he said, and he showed me how his heart broke when I was perverting the gifts that he had already given me and I was trying to manipulate it and push it through a medium. And um, there were a lot of Christian witches that kind of flocked to me as well. And I had multiple sisterhoods throughout like the Midwest and Pennsylvania that I was kind of part of. And we would, you know, have gatherings here and there. And, you know, the modern co coven of today is really like women that meditate together and do these like healing circles together and they do scrying together so i did have multiple communities and i was very involved with those things as well i mean honestly there is so much that i didn't cover because i did so much in those three years and because of that i lost the one thing that i had always asked god for since i was a little girl which was to help me become a doctor that was the one thing that I couldn't do. Even though the brains were there, the scores were there, the academics were there. I sow destruction upon my own head and I get to live with that. If there's anything that anyone could take away from this video is that sobering thought that this is what I get to live with. And then I had the Book of Job experience and then I was plunged into a two and a half year journey of deliverance. But it was that deliverance um, journey of two and a half years of living with my parents that also brought me supernatural acceleration, my growth and my walk with the Lord. It was that it was in that time that I picked up the Bible and I actually started reading the Old Testament because I went to these these churches that are not teaching the true word of God. As a new Christian, I walked in and they were not teaching the true word of God. And so because of that, I had to go walk away and try to find my answers in the world. This is why I am so passionate about actually preaching and teaching what's actually in the Bible. Because believe it or not, you need every word. You need every word because the word is literally Jesus. It says so in John 1. When you cherry pick and choose parts of the Bible that you want to believe and throw out other parts, you are rejecting parts of Jesus. We need full Jesus. We need full word churches. And there are things that the church and I'm talking about all of it. I'm calling out the Protestant church. I'm calling out the Catholic church. I'm calling out the Orthodox church. It's in every church. And that is why I am so passionate about the saints of God rising up and being the ecclesia and not being stuck behind these four walls of a church that are not equipping saints. When there's a new Christian, do not let them go flailing about as I did. When I see a new Christian, I step in. I'm like, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I pray for you? How can I guide you? I don't know that this mentorship is forever, but shoot, if nobody's ministering to you now, I will do it. That's why I'm so passionate about it because I had no one to help me. In fact, what, what I had to deal with in that Baptist church that I went to in Erie, Pennsylvania was ugly behavior towards me because of my background as a Hindu. That's what I had to deal with. And so that's the journey that I got to go through. And I'm not, listen, I'm humble. I take responsibility for my actions. I do. I know that I did wrong. I know now that I needed to repent. So like I take full responsibility for my actions, but look at what I've lost. I lost so much. I mean, years and years of my life. And even now it's 2023 and I am still rebuilding. I am still rebuilding. Like I, it's, you, you guys have no idea how dangerous this stuff is and how long it lasts. God is not a legalist, but Satan surely is. He will look for every bit of legal ground to accuse you in the courts of heaven. 
That's also why I'm so passionate about the courts of heaven. You know, one time I was um, trying to cross over into a certain promise and I seem to have very restricted access to it. And so I went into the courts of heaven and I'm like, Lord, I need access to this. Like, what's stopping me? And you know what came forth? It was a book report that, um, that I did in like the fifth grade talking about my favorite Greek goddess, Athena. Satan used a book, an innocent book report that I did in elementary school as legal grounds to accuse me of having a covenant, an ungodly covenant with a demonic false god. And he used that to restrict my access into a certain part of my promised land. God's not a legalist, honey, but Satan surely is. If you don't think that there's not cases in the courts of heaven stacked up against you, you are deceived. You need the full word of God. So you don't do what I went doing. So you don't go reaping a whole bunch of destruction upon your own career and your own head. And praise God, I'm rebuilding right now. So anyway, that's pretty much the full story. If there's any like really specific stories that I want to share, I will, like an instance maybe. Um, but I welcome questions. Um, if, if you are lost right now or you are a new Christian and you need a mentor right now, I'll do it. If nobody's ministering to you, I'll do it. Um, so I leave that with you. And I pray everybody has a blessed night. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm passionate about the word of God and my mantle is uncommon wisdom to equip saints. So I love to give you prayer strategy that brings results. I love to give you um, insight on kingdom marriage so you can have dominion. So um, that's what you're gonna find here. And I look forward to putting out more content. I hope this blessed you. Thank you.